Well, it's a beautiful blue sky day. Look out of my window, gorgeous. Right out of my window, a few trees, uh, beautifying this urban landscape. And I can see buds on the trees and there's some blossom just on the other side of that tree. And it's the signs of a new life, very cliched, I know, but still very hopeful. My reading today was one of those long lists of names, 1 Chronicles chapter 2, 3 and 4. I kind of glaze over while I'm reading it. I know theologically it's probably very important, but it's not the most thrilling read. Jabez's prayer is in the middle of it, <clears throat> often misused by people to Basically, so you could write a blank check with God and he'll do whatever you want if you play in the right way. We're kind of legalistic uh, interpretation of it rather than a, a cry of desperation is what it was. But thinking as well about this list of names and I guess in the West, we often think of ourselves as individuals. We think of ourselves as isolated we make our own decisions we make our own lives it's not how they looked at it in uh, hebrew society or indeed in many societies today um, you're part of a a family a tribe a clan extended family you're not an individual as such you owe uh, loyalty you owe obligations to others. You're, you're shaped by the history of your family, of your line, your lineage, and it matters where you belong. In cities in the West, perhaps in cities everywhere where people migrate from the countryside, those, are, those connections are cut. Maybe not for the first generation, but the second or third generation, people stop having connections talking to a, a young couple going to get married um, talking to them last night doing the marriage prep and they're from another country and they're very aware that they were westernized they, they use that word as opposed to their parents who although they'd spent many years here had still been formed back home and you think well the children of that young married couple they'll have even less connection they might go occasionally on holiday back to the home country, but it will vanish maybe. And, and then their children, well, probably very little connection at all. Um, speaking the, the, the home language will vanish. Awareness of the customs. Uh, I got a funeral sometimes where uh, I know that there were practices that they would do by the graveside in previous years and generations but now the older people who knew those traditions and would lead them have died and the people who are left middle-aged and young know that something's supposed to happen they have a dim idea of what it is but they don't know what it is they don't remember it and they certainly couldn't do it and so there's a, an awareness of loss i guess that's true all over isn't it in urban settings in cities we've lost a lot of the traditions but also just thinking about the influence of family we were shaped by our families we may have lived separately from them for years we may not see them very much but we were shaped for good and ill. And it's important that as we honour our fathers and mothers, that no matter how bad they were, and some of them may well have been very bad, we give thanks for some of the good things that they did. I asked this couple um, for something good they wanted to learn and copy from their, their parents and uh, something they definitely did not want to copy but wanted to be different. And uh, it's just interesting hearing their observations. At the same time, we may have been abused or neglected, mistreated. 
perhaps simply not loved in a way that we could receive it. And that those things can follow us, those feelings and emotions can follow us in terms of uh, mental illness, but just in terms of a, a dis-ease or unease with ourselves and can affect the quality of our relationships now. Some people talk about familial spirits or ancestral curses. I'm not sure about that. Um, it seems a little bit superstitious to me. Nevertheless, there is an influence on us, however we want to explain it through psychological or spiritual terms. There is an influence on us from our past. And we carry it with us. And so, it's a bit of a disjointed reflection today. I guess I encourage myself and you to to think a little bit about our, our heritage, a little bit about where we belong, and to pray for God's healing on those memories and that inheritance, but also to give thanks for some of the good things as well, and to know that we are not completely isolated individuals. When this couple marry in a couple of weeks' time, they're not just marrying each other, they're marrying the families, for good or ill. And we are part of collectives. Even if you're the most secularised, westernised person in the British Isles, you have a family, you had a family, you had an extended family. Even if you were abandoned and brought up in care, that is part of your background. A clan a tribe, a region of Britain which had its own culture and, and character. And we were shaped by it. We carry it with us, for good or ill. We can give thanks for the good. We can ask for God to redeem what was not good. Let's pray. Father, from these long lists of names, we thank you that uh, you're aware of our histories, our pasts and you want to redeem them. Thank you that on the cross you carried all the shame and the pain of our histories. We give them to you now and ask for you to work in healing in our memories and in our psyches. But we also give thanks for the good things from our families that shaped us and formed us in positive ways as well. Help us, Lord, to... Um, to know that we are not simply isolated individuals, but we are part of generations, part of cultures, part of communities. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening today. God bless you. God be with you. And whatever your family line, he is with you. Amen.